<laughs> oh, you were so funny. Huh? You were so funny. Oh, I know. You too. Okay, guys. All right, you go get down. So, have you ever driven through Amish and Mennonite communities and looked at their gardens and wondered what their secret is? Well, their number one secret is hard work. They work hard. And that's how they keep their gardens um, so neat and clean. But how do they harvest bushels and bushels of vegetables from those gardens? So I'm gonna tell you two tips that help you have a better harvest. So one tip, when you go to buy brassica seedlings at your greenhouses, um, and I'll touch on when you raise your own seedlings as well. But you're gonna be tempted to bring this broccoli home over this broccoli. And I'm sorry, these look a little sad because they traveled with me to a seminar yesterday. So they're not standing up quite as happily as they once did. But the reason I would not get these is because they're already too mature broccoli only has like 70 days to harvest and with the way the roots look on these they have probably already lived 25 to 30 of those days in this little cell pack and when i plant them out they only have about 20 days left 20 days to grow their root system before they'll give a head and the head of broccoli is only going to be as big as their roots have time to grow because the way god designed plants is to recreate themselves by dropping seeds so as far as this broccoli is concerned its only job is to drop seeds so that there can be more broccoli plants it does not know that i want to harvest a nice big head of broccoli so it, within this plant's dna it needs to drop seeds that's its only job and because it's already root bound, we are much closer to a head of broccoli and this does not bode well for a nice big head of broccoli. So things that make broccoli or things that make plants mature is stress and heat. So because broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, because those seedlings are all cold crops, heat is a stress to them. Too much heat um, and they'll mature too fast. Um, too wet, and they'll mature too fast too dry and they'll mature too fast because those are all stress points in the broccoli's life um so now this broccoli is not yet root bound so it does not it has not yet received the message that my life is about over i need to form a head so that i can drop seeds so when i plant this broccoli in my garden all it's gonna do is going to put out a big root system because that is the stage that it's in it's still in the stage of putting down roots and by the time the plant reaches the stage where it's going to start forming a head it will have had probably 20 to 25 days of just growing roots whereas this one only has about 10 days of growing roots left before it's gonna start forming a head. And you won't see the head. It's not like you'll be in 10 days, you'll see a broccoli head, but that it, within the plant's um, maturity, that's what's gonna happen. It's gonna stop putting effort into the roots and start putting efforts into the fruit because that's where it is in its development. And this one is still in root development. So that's what it's going to be doing when I plant it out. When, and the bigger the root, the bigger your harvest is going to be. So you want to get broccoli that's in the stage of putting roots down rather than get broccoli that doesn't have much root stage left. And this is true for all cold crop seedlings. Tomatoes and peppers are a little more forgiving because they have a longer life to start with and they don't only have one harvest. Like if you plant tomatoes, that are root bound or stress they'll snap out of it and you might just have less to er less early harvest and the later harvest because it doesn't only give you one tomato like brassicas give you one cabbage one cauliflower or one nice big broccoli and even lettuce is that way but with your tomatoes and peppers 
they will continue to grow and your later harvest will represent that the plant had more time to put down a healthy root system. So if you buy tomatoes and peppers that are already stressed and too mature, your early harvest will indicate that, but you'll still get a good later harvest. Now, if you're a home, if you raise your seedlings at home, what you want to do is when your plants are at this stage, if you're not ready to put them out in the garden, you want to give them bigger pots so that they don't get root bound. You don't want them to reach their root capacity before they reach that developmental stage where they would stop putting down roots and form a head. So giving them bigger pots is how you keep them from reaching their root capacity if it's not yet time to put them out in the garden. So that's why this is a better option, even though these look sad today, than this. And that's also why it's important to understand your days to germination when you're starting your seeds at home. You'll want to understand your days to germination, your last frost date, because it's important to not have broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, lettuce, and even tomatoes and peppers that are root bound and well past the developmental stage where they should be in the garden. This is a French breakfast radish seed. And this is a French breakfast radish seed. This is from a big box store and it has 1.9 grams and I gave a dollar and 44 cents for it. This is from a private owned seed store close to my house. And it has one ounce of French breakfast radish seeds. And I gave $1.60 for that one ounce. So I gave about 20 cents more for all of these seeds than I did for these. However, that to me doesn't even matter so much. What matters is these radish seeds are from a federally inspected distributor. And what that means is they have to do a germination test on all their seeds that they plan to sell this year. So they've done the germination tests and they keep all the seeds that, have, that pass the federal inspection rate of germination. And right here on the package, it says the germination rate for these radishes is 90%. All the seeds that don't pass that germination rate, guess who buys them? You're right. Big box stores are gonna buy those seeds that don't pass the inspection rate and they can sell them because they don't have um, a seed license. So they don't have to pass that inspection rate. Now, the other thing is this place, the seed warehouse for the federally inspected seeds has to stay within five degrees of temperature at all times year round because when the temperature goes up and down, that diminishes the germination rate of your seeds. This place, they keep their seeds from one year to the next and um, warehouses, who knows what the temperature is. So you're absolutely gonna have much better luck buying your seeds from a federally licensed seed distributor. Just think of all the radishes my family's gonna eat from this pack versus I mean, you, I can almost count the seeds that are in here. I bet there's about 50 seeds in here. And let's say they have a 50% germination rate. You're going to have 25 radishes. Not to mention how many of these packages are you going to need if you want this amount of radishes. The other thing is peas. Now, I've already planted all my peas. So I can't show you what mine look like from my seed supplier, but these are an early frosty, which used to be very, very popular. They really don't do that well anymore. And I've switched which kind of peas I plant to the Penelope kind. Um, anyway, there's eight grams of peas in here and I counted them. I think there's like 25 seeds of peas in this package. To get two 50-foot rows in my garden, two double 50-foot rows in my garden, I need two pounds of peas for my family. 
I can't imagine what I would spend. And then there's no germination rate on here. So out of these 25 seeds, if they have a 50% germination rate, which I think anything under 50% germination rate, um, federally licensed um, distributors can't sell. Anyway, so if 50% of these sprout, I've got maybe 12 to 15 peas coming up. And what do peas want? Peas want to be planted thick, so thick that they shade their roots because peas want cool, cool roots. And I don't know that with eight grams of seeds, they would come up thick enough to shade their roots. Anyway, that's my thoughts and opinions and knowledge on selecting good seedlings and good seeds for your successful garden.